Yeah, I've been following quite a few, yeah, in the SpeedCube DB competition, like some of the solution, I just look at the solver's hand and it looked, it looked as if they are playing. I remember speaking with you, Daniel, it was like playing a piano where you keep your fingers close to the notes. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not up, you know. So mm -hmm. when you cube, some people like, lift their fingers away and the teacher tell them, no, no, you have to feel the note. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually had a student a couple of days ago that uh, when they, when they did this OLL, they would sort of do like a, like a lift off. Yeah. Like a, I'd be like, whoa, whoa, what's going on there? The, like, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> I feel like I relate to that so much when students are like doing this. <laughs> actually, I was, one of my classes, I teach a second grade orchestra class. And that must we were, be very um, fun. It's, they're getting really into it. And oh. um, the we we're working on um, Can Can. Ah. At one point, there's a that yeah. and I'm um, a lot of the students were going yeah 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 and so I was talking about keeping fingers close and then it was just preparing ahead so I've got a few videos I was like I'd go to some students I'm like okay I'm gonna record your hand in slow motion and so then I would show the class a couple of the students as they get to hear their hand is already getting set and already <laughs> down even though they're not actually there yet they know what's going to happen or at least their hand is already preparing for what's going to happen even if they're not consciously doing it at that point yeah i kept doing that with square one because there you have to like do an x2 to watch the bottom and out of force of a habit i had like i always removed my hand just to uh. look at where all the pieces are it's the same with three by three you know where you pick up your hand for to look for all or pll to see more pieces and it takes a lot of practice not to pick up your hand or raise it in like, yeah, I finished that all out and I want to see <laughs> Whoa, what the rest I did it. <laughs> yeah. But now, something I see a lot yeah. is um, in square one. Wait, what do I see a lot? Um, actually, I completely forgot. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll remember. It. I'll remember it. It's like. It, first of all it feels so good like yeah i finished that masterpiece but then <laughs> uh, it looks to it helps to look ahead but it's a really bad habit like it, it's not looking ahead you don't know what you're doing next it's like with a piece that you're playing you need to know what comes up next and like readjust your hand for it or even readjust your hand to look at where you need to look at so i see some parallel lines there that people are tend to like lift their hands both to look and both because it feels so good but to <laughs> see where they need to go next the the looking ahead is kind of the biggest thing for for me for when i talk about using a cube and i talk to my students with it related to music it's just you're you're not ever like reading the note you're on is gonna get you stuck because then you you're not ready for the next note that's happening and so yeah you, if, like from the start even if you're playing slow you're you're focusing on looking ahead because i mean we do it every day we do it in everything we do when you're walking we start reading we english or the language you speak yeah and we're not staring at our feet when we walk <laughs> um video games like you don't and i use this in my video about looking ahead you're not staring yeah. at you're not looking at mario you're looking ahead of him yeah that's, um, true. that's true there was there was one video i, I made that Jaden apparently shared in his like email list about <laughs> um, it was where not to look. And it was like, don't look at your own hands. Don't look yeah. at that because you don't, that's what you're already doing and you know what to do. You don't need to look at it. It's, it's hard to not look away because you're like, you're following it and you're like, oh, okay, that is, that did go where I want it to, but you've ruined the whole purpose of, of doing that. Being so so yeah. great. I did it. Oh, wait, what yeah. next? <laughs> yeah. And so with music, that's just, and, and I hear people talk about, um, oh, you don't need to don't need to wear a look ahead until you're below twenty seconds. Like, what? Why not? Why? I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. So it's like it's like it's like you don't need to worry about reading the next note in music until you can play Can Can in under twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're playing in Carnegie Hall. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then it's just avant garde. You can just. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very wide vibrato. <laughs> <laughs> it's jazzy finger tricks. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, before we resort to personal insults, um, <laughs> Sean, you've been teaching how to play, especially the strings. And if there's something that I know that's related to cubing is to always start slow and know what you're doing before you pick up the pace. Mm-hmm. And especially with strings, I know that you really have to, you don't just touch the string, you have to like push it in a specific, specific or particular way. Mm-hmm. There's, um, yeah, I'm writing down a note for myself, so I actually remember this because, um, well, uh, I, th- I feel like I'm, people talk about practicing with a metronome with cubing and I feel like it, it goes yeah. in ways where people are like, oh, we should try this. And then people try mm-hmm. and they're like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, this it's... makes sense. Yeah. And, um, the, the I'm writing one more thing down. The, <laughs> I don't feel like people understand why, like we use a metronome with, with playing to keep us steady. Yeah. I, I heard people say, or it keeps me slower. Well, I feel like that's just self-control, learning, learning to slow down. Um, <laughs> but like the whole purpose, and we talked with accurate turning, that we go slow so we can make sure we are accurate. Um, but I don't actually tell my students ever at this point to practice slow. I use the term, and that's what I wrote down, because I think I might make a video on this. It's practice in slow motion. I, I do that too. I do that too. Yeah, I, I say, say like slow. imagine imagine you're like imagine you're like in a in like you're like like a slow mo video and you can like you have but your brain is like normal speed like imagine yeah. you're doing a solve at like this speed but like yeah yeah and like I had um so the the that class of second graders um they had a concert and the last week we played everything in slow motion and it was exhausting <laughs> because they weren't just like doing this. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I like having to get the eyebrows into it. <laughs> and like they're, they're having fun with it. But and I, the way I, I started off the class, too, um, I had some students leave the class. So they didn't see what what the other kids did. I was like, OK, you two, I want you to walk down here, but I want you to just walk slowly. And they all kind of walked slowly, kind of step, step by step. Other kids came back in. Okay, I want you to walk now from here to here in slow motion. And every, it worked every time. Every kid was like. <laughs> like they got so. And so, yeah. So with with cubing, like if I'm practicing. One thing when I. um, I have this habit with some of my J permutations. Where instead of keeping it here and doing it all with basically no regrips at all. I'll. Hold it like this, and then regrip another time there, and I get actually similar times with it. I think I've done it so much; I'm so used to it. But I need to go slowly to do that accurately and and know what's going on. And I need to do slow motion because if I just do it slowly, nothing's going to click. If I do it slow motion, I'm basically doing how I normally would: slowly speed up with it, and then get to a point where I can just do that. Um, and even still, like I don't feel like pretty much every cuber can solve, can turn the cube faster than they can actually turn it during a solve. Um, I can, like, just doing, just spamming um, R U R prime, U prime, like, for sure, I think there was a one point, last time I checked, which was years ago, I was like, okay, that was 25 turns per second. <laughs> I'm not doing that in a solve. And it's like, so there's there's never really a, a time to spam. You just go at a speed that that you can still be accurate. So when you get faster with OLO and PLO, you're going at a speed you can do that at that pace. You're not going still as fast as you can because you, you're, I'm not doing a J permutation at 25 turns per second. It's not ever going to happen for me. Daniel, when you play music, do you sometimes feel that if you overthink it like algorithms, you forget it? Like it's too much of a muscle memory? Uh, you know, when you tell times... people to do something slow and they, okay, it was too slow. I forgot the algorithm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you're only used to doing it quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely feel this, the same way, like with certain things, man, there, there are definitely some, I feel like every time I try to teach four by four OLL parody on a lesson, I, I mess that up constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot do that thing slow. So that, that's just a humbling thing for me. Uh, but 
something that I really like that really opened my eyes was uh like you know like I never really went too deep into like scale practice I wasn't really like a you know like like that kind of stuff like yeah <laughs> you know uh what you hear in the practice rooms uh but I only like my 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 teacher uh, he was like what if you took the same energy that you that you have like to a song or like like the same a level of focus to like an entire song or say an entire average, an entire solve, whatever you want to be, whatever it wants to be. What if you took that level of focus and applied it to just one scale, to just practicing one scale? Mm. Like what if you what if you were playing the scale as if, oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to say like as if, as if this, but like, I don't know, as if you're Try performing in, in this, like, or as if somebody's watching, or as if somebody isn't watching, or something that my teacher said is uh practice as if you're underwater. Mm. Like which is which is which is basically like slow motion but in a different word like described differently mm -hmm. so like if i'm if i'm like practicing piano i don't like i i can't i can't do this i have to like oh uh, the water has to move out of the way and i have to yeah. i have to da, 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 like i have to really like pretend that everything is flowing and also i want to touch on the metronome thing because uh the the what the thing i think that metronome practice really like doesn't do right is because in music, the goal is sometimes to play notes evenly, like in time. And because, you know, mm -hmm. all, you know, it's all, it's all like, you know, music is, is, in, is this creation that is in, that is, you know, works with time as like music doesn't exist without time. Mm -hmm. But uh, in cubing, have you ever seen a fast solve where they turn the same speed the, throughout the entire Never. solve? Never. I no. want to now, but. Yeah. Never. I mean, Timon comes pretty close, but. No, no. Uh, that, that's just because he doesn't. Yeah. That's, that's just because he just. The just last doesn't. layer is always faster because it's yeah. fully algorithmic. It's always faster, almost, sometimes almost double the speed. So. And if, and if you notice. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. But I, I just wanted to say that if there was ever a problem for me as a cuber, was to change the pace, like the change the tempo when yeah. I cube between last layer, which should be super fast, and let's say F12. I don't want to say cross, cross should be fast as you can, but to pick up the pace or to change the, you know, the pace like of music, because what I got used to is like listening to the sounds, like I can recognize my own T perm, J perm. I, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you can too, but I had a really hard time to change the tempo and to execute it fast because I was so used to doing it in a specific tempo, which is something that a reason why I will never use a metronome because it will get me stuck in the same speed. That's something that teaching cubing has really like helped me with is just knowing your algorithms inside and out because you cannot teach an algorithm slowly if you don't know it. So like yeah. all these PLLs, I'm like R2. <laughs> you are prime like i if i mess it up you can you can you can make fun of me you, you are <laughs> there's a video and I, I don't know if i'm if i'm remembering this incorrectly um but i know that the video was like felix and matt solving a large like a giant yeah yeah, yeah 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 and i think there was a moment where they were trying to remember how to do an algorithm and they were like yeah 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 literally yeah it's so, like you, you forget know, some, with one-headed. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say with the slow motion, because um, I feel like the, the, the difference between slow motion and underwater mm. is with underwater, the wrists are often before. Mm. Like with slow mm. motion, it doesn't have to be, but I feel like with underwater, everyone, yeah, everyone's yeah. been in like a pool or something and they're just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> During no, that. yeah, yeah. We You're did right. that in conducting. The the like. Nah. <laughs> Thought you were going to say the resistance of the water that you need to exert more force. In, in somewhat, yeah, much yeah. simpler mere terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you both of you find sometimes that like Cuban, you cannot continue from the middle of the algorithm that you cannot continue from middle of a score oh yeah. Mm. yeah oh oh yeah uh i mean there's been there's well there was once i was in the middle of a g perm and i dropped the cube and i'm like oh yeah that's done <laughs> but with yeah and with music so i for my master's my main project was a paper on memorization 
And I mean, the, the short story of it, I initially planned on doing all these studies on how the brain works, but it ended up, there was a lot of actual just studies of, Hey, you memorize music like this, you do it like this. Let's see what's more efficient. And, um, the, the surprising results, um, and there's some things to note that they were often shorter pieces. It was within like 20 minutes or an hour. It wasn't like a 10 page piece that crazy, but it was, um, every single study that I got in the last like 30 years, those who, who read it just straight through, just like played it through, played it through again, played it through again, every single study I, like, I could find, they memorized it more effectively than those who did section by section. Oh, really? Which is what, like, I was told by almost every teacher, you know, do that section. And then once you got yeah, back, do what? the next section. And um, so I think the idea, what what I kind of concluded with it was that you're getting the big picture. You're, you're seeing it from begin to end. And so you're connecting mm -hmm. it all. The problem with that, though, is if you're performing and the, the chain breaks, yeah. you can't just pick up. So in the paper, I end up having to say, okay, this is what the studies do show. But when we get to a larger piece, these are some issues that will happen. So then you have to start from the middle. And with music, yeah, it's great to be able to go, okay, I need to be able to start from measure 27, or I'm going to start right from this spot. That way, if anything does happen, or if you're just, you know, riffing and want to jump to something, you can. I don't think there's going to be many times I'll be, I'll have to do the second half of a G perm without the first half. Yeah. Um, and I think once you're doing a team factory solve and someone really messes up, that's oh. true. Yeah. I think the only, the only thing would be, you know, don't mess those up, but also since, since it'd be one or two seconds to do that, I, that's where the, I think a divide between cubing and music, knowing things halfway through would be a bigger issue. Yeah. Something that, that, that reminded me of is, um, for my, jazz improv final assignment we all had to pick a like a a decently sized like solo um not like us like the song is a solo but like you know during the song they take a solo um and it has to be like a decently set like not just a 10 second like a little snippet like a real two minute three minute whatever solo uh and so i picked a really hard solo i i challenged myself and i would and a really um common practice especially like in the you know in the pre-internet days pre-whatever days is learning the learning the entire thing by ear like and not approaching your instrument at all until you can sing every note perfectly mm -hmm. like if you can if you can sing it you can play it so like so there's a, there's a I remember there's a point where I was just this solo I was just playing the solo over and over again every day just like which was it, in my room way? say what which piece was it uh it's so it's by the saxophonist michael brecker uh he has a he has a tune called syzygy which is which is actually the word for when a when a sun when the sun and the moon like are in front of each other or when you have like an eclipse that's called a syzygy uh, which is it's just a really cool word but the entire the entire song is like you know this like f major like kind of sus vamp like this really cool like just michael brecker stuff but for the first two and a half minutes it's just him and jack dijonette who's the drummer it's just them playing with each other. And there's something really, really, really intimate about two people playing just by themselves before the rest of the band comes in for like an entire two and a half minutes. Because drums and saxophone, like you have no chords, you have no bass. It's just time and whatever Michael's playing. <laughs> so it's it's like this, it's like this world, like like there are no rules. Like, like there's, it's just Michael's playing whatever he wants and Jack is responding. So there was a point where I was listening to it so many times that I would like, I would like play it in the middle. I would play it like a minute and a half down and I'd be like, Oh, and I picked up right from when he started. And I was like, okay, now I'm starting to actually learn this solo because I can pick up from it, not from the beginning, but from any point if I wanted to. Literally and, uh, inside out, like from. Every yeah. Like angle. You, you should. So like a lot of, a lot of like old jazz masters would be like, don't touch your instrument until you can sing the entire solo. Like, which is like hardcore <laughs> but yeah that's the idea yeah i was telling sean beforehand about square one that cube shape is something like that like you can stop in the middle of a cube shape algorithm and just continue from the same point because if you really know cube shape you know that it's a shape that leads to a shape that leads to a shape and if you stop in the middle you can always pick up with the yeah same so it's algorithm. all a family yeah yeah I like music. They're all brothers and sisters. 
Um, if there's something that I found also familiar is the mental priming that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean spoke about not like learning in sections and once you break it, you get stoked. Like getting an OLL skip and reaching PL uh-huh. and like, what the OLL oh. solved, you know? I hate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so exactly I like- I to get an OLL skip. <laughs> yeah, you you and Daniel Goodman, Dan, DG, he's like, my least favorite skip is an OLL skip. Why not just solve the damn cube? Like, come on. Like, <laughs> I want a PLL skip. OLL skip is just stressful. <laughs> means i have to keep going <laughs> it, it's the same with music i guess like guess you're 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 performing in front of an audience you skip something and then you need to get to that specific you know note and you, you cannot really prime yourself you know you 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 are were already mentally primed to do it from the start to the end and then like something caught my attention and then i have to Get your brain to starts to go in a bunch of different directions and there was um so during my undergrad i i did um technique for all the orchestra instruments all the band instruments piano percussion because i'm certified to teach those and i did vocal techniques and the professor picked a song for each of us and with my range which i still to this day feel like it was way too high for my range um was the song joanna from Sweeney Todd and so I've already I've been struggling with it and I was like okay I get to the day and I'm doing my best to sing and I realized I jumped because I see the pianist go <laughs> and then <laughs> like in the middle I I don't know how what I did but I know I was like okay just go back to and and I like then went back so I see the pianist and <laughs> and like but then my brain's thinking about that and no longer thinking about the rest of the song i'm like so i'm i'm singing some words thinking about something else and yeah yeah to be immersed in the music the entire time is really hard mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so easy to get distracted by like you know some sound or a mistake you made or you're not you're not thinking right um yeah, yeah i get distracted just... while cubing too like i'll instead of be focusing on the solve i'm just like like I'll see the the um not the the judge. What's the person with the stopwatch called? Yeah, the judge. That's the a judge. Did I call yeah. the judge? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, like they'll like do something other or they'll put the stopwatch down yeah. and so my brain's like, mm, would it be better if they just held on to it? And I'm just going along and I was like, yeah. no, focus, focus. If my judge isn't a statue, I get distracted. Yeah. You mean you don't want them solving their own cube while you're solving? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no i asked for an extra on these cases <laughs> yeah no um and what was i gonna say uh i feel like i had something oh yeah um when it comes to like you know like i i feel like there's this sort of like performance trauma that you get like when something happens to you during a performance you like never forget it like you never forget that one mess up or that note and so you like you're infinitely better at it because of it or like whatever you want to call it so like for me Uh, for square one, I am constantly learning new algorithms and trying to like improve them. So in competition, I am always like a risky solver. So like mm-hmm. any, like if I get a case, I don't like I I'm learning or I, I like have put on the back burner and haven't touched in a few months, like that's a bad thing. And that teaches me that, all right, after this comp, you're going to review that, that case because you have no excuse anymore. You got it. Like uh, it's, it's now like in the sample size of what you've gotten officially and what you get officially is like, It's the, it, it really is the only thing that matters. Like unofficial solves, yeah, they're practice, but like official solves is, the, is like the, the test. I mean, unless you care about other stuff, but if that's your goal, yeah. I remember in one of the podcasts I did with, I think it was with Patrick Ponce, he told, he, he says something about the longer events, like six by six or seven by seven. If I'll ever watch a reconstruction, there's never one single impeccable solve. Like there's always mm-hmm. some kind of error mistakes in those long, even with Max's solves and Max is yeah. amazing. There's always some kind of mistakes in accuracy and you really need that mindset to go into a long solve. Let's say even a Megaminx. Today it's 25 seconds, but still. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about 
music in that regards. Like when you go into performing something and you know that in such a long, let's call it, it it's a composition. I have to use this word because one will, if someone won't mess up, it's something bad happened, you know? Like how do you get into that mindset? Is it the same like with longer events of speed cubing or... Because you, you you need to be on point when when playing people are hearing you mm -hmm. I feel like um like I for my my master's with like performance recital I had a few really long pieces um and when I'm reading music it's a little bit easier because you just keep my eyes on the music but for the first half of it the first three pieces were all from memory and so it was like I, I don't know like almost a half an hour of just playing from memory and I don't know anymore what my brain was doing because if I start thinking about the music, then I start thinking about thinking about the music and my brain is uh. like, my, I'm like I'm talking to myself in my own head about focusing on the music, but then I realize that I start almost having a conversation with my inner monologue and then I've lost yeah. focus there. Yeah. So I really have no idea. I think at the moment, the only way I made it through was that I was so emotionally invested that my that I just it was like a cloud while I was in there it was just it, my brain was kind of foggy because I was just high energy and I'm just as involved as I can in my playing um and I feel like there are there are times in cubing where I feel like that like I get so invested that I'm just in it and I'm not I one thing actually that I found that helps and I forget to do this at competitions because it does help I hum when I'm Salt. Yeah. And it's not even, it's not, it's not out loud. I'm not, but it's like almost just internally, or I'll just do like a heavy breath, like this sound. I don't know if it showed up in there, but just something that it's something that I can do so my brain can focus on this and not start going off. And I'm sure it's different for everyone. Like, I, I guess it's how, how attention definitely, like how much your brain goes off to the sides. But, but I, I, and I, I need to do something to distract my own self, to stay focused on longer solves. You know, you're like, going to be distracted, so at least fill that distraction with something that you pick. Some, yeah, something that, that's not going to actually distract my brain, but something that's just a, almost like when people put on, um, I guess, a white noise machine. Like to me, a white noise machine doesn't help me at all stay focused, but I guess if I'm making the sounds, it does. Something I've noticed is, um... You can really tell who is in control of like how focused they are by like how well they're breathing in their solve or in, in their performance. Like a lot of times when I'm judging like kids, you can sort of tell they're like, <gasps> like they're sort of holding their breath sometimes or it's very irregular. Like there's not much control, but a really good way to sort of, at least for me is like when you're doing longer stuff, like a longer song, a longer concert, a longer event is just center yourself with your breath like you will always have your breath and it'll be there for you so you know that solve will end but you'll keep breathing so let's let's make that <laughs> unless you do that. it too much and you hyperventilate i've seen people <laughs> yeah like, that, before that's, the that's solve, like... <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's also something you should you know keep track of but you know if i'm like doing a concert that's like super long and i'm like maybe not terribly invested in it um i'd be like all right just read the notes play the music breathe solo when you have to solo and you'll be done <laughs> like you know do you ever have you ever had a habit of holding your breath while you play sometimes yeah but i i whenever i i, I always try to be like as like like any any update to my like brain it's like okay breathe <sighs> like anytime i notice my 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 breath doing weird stuff like you'll see me playing kale i'll be like <sighs> just to kind of reset myself because i'm like all right no more of this like let's get back to let's get back to you know square one haha -ha. But yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but yeah, like an inner metronome. What about? And I'm sorry if I'm touching a sore spot. The itch, like something is itching you. You're in the middle of an of a piece or a solve, and you know you had to like, or or about to sneeze or something that's super <laughs> bugging you. Or I know it happens sometimes. I mean, I was at. A competition with a four by four i was nearing the pll i i had a sneeze that didn't come out i i wanted to come out 
I did an H perm with two PLL parities. <laughs> That's how concentrated I was. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I wonder what was the there... about to sneeze world record is. <laughs> was there a moment that happened for you, Daniel? Because you, you had a reaction to that. <laughs> I just, just the idea of having to sneeze during a performance is so relatable. I don't know why, but like, it's so funny because I'm like playing and then I'm just like looking around. I'm like, all right, where's the nearest light source? I need to sneeze. Because if you look at a bright light, if you look at a bright light, you will, you will sneeze more easily. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. Like some people oh, actually, some people, if they actually look at the sun, they start sneezing, which is weird. But um, yeah, yeah actually, that's. I had a conversation just like last week with my wife about this because we were talking about that. And I guess there is. The, the scent the way your brain senses the the and this is what I remember the way the the your pupils dilate differently is very close to or similar to the sensors of like forcing yourself to sneeze and so your wow. brain kind of connects them that's what we were told that's what we talked about wow. very briefly a week ago and I don't know the accuracy of that but I'm gonna say it because it's a podcast, I can say anything. I'm going to say it confidently. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yes, I'm going to blow your mind with this fact. <laughs> I, I definitely want to look into that. that. That's very intriguing. It's like the science of sneezing. Because I'm pretty sure, whatever. But that, <laughs> let's not go into a sneeze <laughs> podcast. But, but yeah, just the idea of like having to do something like, I don't know, there have been times where a lot of times I've been dehydrated on stage. Like I always bring a water bottle on stage and sometimes I'm like, like I'm playing and I can't really stop playing. So, and I'm like, ah, my mouth is dry. My mouth is dry. So I'm just, I'm really just focusing on just like get through, get through until you can stop playing and then get your water bottle drink and then come back. Like, you know, like a lot of times that's, that's what distracts me. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's like a disconnect in the band. Sometimes we're not like lining up the way the music would want to, like, let's say I'm, you know, the bass is just playing a different, harmony than what i'm implying and i look at him and i'm like hey wh what's going on there buddy like or like if the drummer is is off and not getting or like let's say the drummer is a measure behind and you play the figure to a song that they play a measure later and you're like oh that let's yeah like that might that might you know l screw things up in your head and and you and it takes a real master musician to recover from a mess up like mm -hmm. like you, do you it's, stop it's, or just science. continue until you synchronize? So the there's there's two options. You either go with what you thought was right, or you go with what the other person thought was right. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's a matter of balancing which uh which whose confidence will overpower each other. Because uh, and switch. who's yeah, or who's <laughs> like you, you both yeah. switch at the same time. Yeah, and so overcompensate it, so together. There has to be a lot of like trust and communication within the band. And you just have to be like, all right, I'm following you. Like I like you are taking me somewhere. I'm I'm not bossing you around. Where or you could be like, or if I'm like, if I know the song better than you know someone else, I'd be like, here's where we are. We are here. Don't mess it up. Like, like there's there have been there's been so many times where I would like, or someone would outline the beginning of a of a section for me uh, during a solo because I would be lost or they would be lost. Uh, you know, sometimes you can see when someone's lost, you, yeah. you, you get, you get an idea. Uh, but yeah, just all these things that can distract you, like, you know, disconnect between the band or just like body functions, like dehydration and having to use the bathroom, you know, sneezing, all that stuff, you know?